right? Okay, so 3, 1 is using the definition of a derivative, so it's going to be review. So the reason they, they throw the definition of it into, hold on, let me say that again. The reason they use the definition of a derivative in both chapters is because the limit as x approaches 0, or h approaches 0, is part of the limit section, which is the chapter 2 stuff. And now we're going to use it for the derivative idea. Okay. So, um, first thing that I want to do is just kind of, uh, well, we can go over the fact that we know this already. The definition of the derivative. Okay, so you wrote this down in your in your notes, right? Oh, no. You still have it in there? Absolutely. Okay, so the reason that the, the, the definition of a derivative becomes important is because it, it helps us to find the slope of some kind of curve, okay? And that's a big idea. Okay, so this helps us find the slope, okay, or an instantaneous rate of change. Yes. Okay, um, you will also be asked to find the tangent line. Okay, so the tangent line, um, I'm just going to slide this over for a second here. Okay, they have this picture of some function. It kind of looks like a quadratic, so that blue function. And you can see that they're, they're analyzing the slope at this point right here, um, x sub zero. Okay. So the slope is being analyzed by this peak function, okay, which is our tangent line. Okay. So what do you notice about this tangent line? What kind of equation are we going to use to represent the tangent line? Linear. Oh, linear. It will always be linear. So to make things very straightforward for you, the tangent line will always be in a form of a linear form. And, and I think it's easiest to use the point slope form. Okay, so if you don't remember the point slope form, um, it goes y minus y1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. Okay, so all you need is some point which is generally given, at least the x value. The slope is what you need uh, to analyze uh, the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the definition of a derivative to find a slope at a given point. Okay, now this is not new information. The only thing is that this equation is just a little bit harder than the, the quadratic one we just did on the warm-up today. Okay, okay so we are going to find the slope at point three three by using the definition. Are you ready? Okay, so it's gonna go the limit as h approaches zero. What is the first thing that I need to do? Uh, into the definition of a derivative. Oh, plug into Uh getting closer. <laughs> x plus h. So we're gonna take x plus h and plug it into the x's. Hold on, I'm going to write that a little bit. Uh, just kind of ignore it. Maybe just look up. Okay. And then I'm going to subtract my function. What's that thing that it do? It's just a comma. So it's saying here's my function, and comma, we're going to find the slope when the point is 3, 3. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so after I plug in x plus h, then I subtract what? <coughs> The function, so I subtract x over x minus 2, and then that's all over h. Okay. Now we haven't done one that's quite this complicated. At this point, what we have is a complex fraction, so a fraction that exists within a fraction. So the first thing that we have to do is on the top, we need to get a common denominator because we're subtracting two fractions. So what's my common denominator? Okay. And OK, 
Okay, so and x plus h minus 2. So our common denominator is, is the x plus h minus 2 and the x minus 2. So hopefully you remember this. All I'm going to do is, it kind of looks like cross multiplication, right? So I'm going to multiply this left fraction by x minus 2 to get a common denominator, and the right fraction by x plus h minus 2. Okay, and now I'm going to simplify. Now, do you guys want me to like step this out and go really slow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that I would do is I would uh, foil. Oh, can I ask you a question? Okay. Mm. Sorry, but can't you just multiply? Can't you just multiply the common denominator by h minus two? Yeah, you can't just multiply the common denominator by h minus two. Yeah, but it's a different quantity completely Because let's just say let's just say x is one, h is two, and we have minus. Well, let's not say that. Let's just say we had uh, one denominator is one plus two plus three, and the other one is one plus two. You see what I'm saying? So is one plus two plus three the same number as one plus two? So they're completely different numbers. Okay. So on the top fraction, I'm gonna foil. Do you see that top? I'm gonna. Uh, foil x minus 2 times x plus h. So what is x times x? x squared. What is x times h? x, h. What is negative 2 times x? 2x and negative 2 times h? Negative 2h. Okay, so that's over your common denominator, x minus 2 and x plus h minus 2. Okay, and the second fraction, I'm just going to distribute the x through. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, x squared plus xh minus 2x over the common denominator. And still, that's all over h. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so now, since I have common de denominators, what can I do at the tops? Combine them, right? So all I'm going to do is subtract the tops now. Okay, so on the top, um, I'm going to write this out very slowly. It is possible that you're just going to go straight into the adding of the like terms on the top, but I'm just going to write this out very sequentially. So I have x squared plus xh minus 2x minus 8, or 2h. Make sure to distribute the negative through that whole second fraction. So minus x squared minus xh plus 2x. And that's all over your common denominator. And that's all over h. Okay, so now let's go ahead and combine our top top. What do you notice uh, can cancel on the very top top? X squareds cancel. What else? The xh's cancel. Anything else? The 2x is good. So the only thing that I have left over on the top is a negative 2h. Okay, so this time I'm going to write my h that's in the bottom just a little bit different so you can see what's going to happen here. Do you remember that h is the same as h over 1? No. Okay. And technically, you're dividing by a fraction. So if I divide by a fraction, what is that the same as? Yeah, by the reciprocal. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to have a negative 2h over the common denominator. Okay, and I'm going to multiply by, instead of h over 1, I'm going to multiply by 1 over h. Okay, so now I'm looking for any kind of canceling that I can do. Can anything cancel? The h's. I have an h on the top and an h on the bottom. Okay, which is what I'm looking for in the... Definition of a derivative, I always am trying to cancel that h in the bottom. Once I've canceled it, what's my last step? 
Okay, yeah, that's the last part is always taking the limit. Okay, so I'm going to plug zero into the H's, or I guess one H that I see. So I have X minus two, and then X plus zero minus two. Okay, what do you notice on the bottom? Good, so can in... Perfect, very good. Okay. Super awesome there. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely not. We'll learn that trick later, not today, but I think it's in the next section. So uh, that's not the answer to the question. That is the derivative. Okay. So way back at the top, like five lines up. Okay, it says we want to find the slope at the point 33. <coughs> okay, so all we're going to do is take the x value, which is the 3, and we plug that into our derivative, and that will tell us what the slope is at that spot. Okay, so I'm going to write the notation m representing slope. I'm plugging 3 into the x value. So I have 3 minus 2 squared. Okay, so what does my bottom become? One. 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 So would everyone agree that my slope at the point three three would be negative two? Okay. Um, I do. I do want to just write the equation of the tangent line really quick. Um. So let's just say this says that the question said now write the equation of the tangent line so instead of going through and doing a whole separate problem let's just use this problem and the information we have to quickly explain how you'd write the tangent line okay so how would I write the equation of the tangent line okay remember it's the linear equation right you wrote this down uh, you're using the form y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 okay what is the point that they gave to you 3, 3. 3, 3. So we're using the point 3, 3. Okay, we're using the slope we just found as negative 2. So what is my tangent line equation? There you go, y minus 3. Nice. Okay, so that would be the equation of the tangent line. <laughs> it's pretty impressive, isn't it? You start to realize, like, and then think of the time frame when they did it. They did it, like, over 100 years ago. You know, like, without calculators or anything like that. How do you just discover math? That doesn't make sense. I don't know, but they got, they got paid a lot of money to do it. Like I understand, like, well, there was a bunch of mathematicians, so it was like a competition. And then the person who could be the smartest was like the most, he was like becoming a king. You know, it brought them power. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, that equation right there, that's about as complicated as you're going to get when you're using a difference quotient. Or the Same definition. Actual. I say difference quotient. Yeah. But. Okay. So I have one more example. This is probably the second hardest. Okay, scenario. Pretty straightforward, but this is something you've seen before. We worked with this scenario with limits. What did you say the one you have What's that? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, like 19 maybe? It's the one that has theta and delta. Oh, oh by the way, here's something that I'm noticing that's happening not only just on the test, but as people were working through these equations yesterday on the assignment. When you are walking through this and writing this down, are you writing the limit as h approaches 0 every time? <coughs> Okay, technically that's incorrect notation. Okay, so if, if you do that on a test, that would be incorrect notation and you would lose points. Okay, I understand that, oh, maybe you're just being a little bit lazy and not writing it, 
But what happens is people then forget to plug 0 into the h at the very end. You forget. You get to that last spot and simplify and go, okay, now what do I do next? Okay, so you need to write that limit as h approaches 0 piece. Okay, this piece right here. This should be on every single line that you write down. The limit as h approaches 0 until you actually do it. All right, you guys ready? Okay, focus. Here we go. First step. Plug in x plus h. So I'm going to have the square root of x plus h minus my function, which is the square root of x all over h. It's called algebra. The idea of a variable. Okay. So, who can remember how to work with a square root? The the switched one, yes. I think yes. Do you remember? Can you give me more details? Like, what is the switched one? Would it be like you put the bottom? You switch the negative. Of which one? The the radical piece, right? Okay. So we're talking about uh, the conjugate. Someday you guys are gonna remember that word. <laughs> Someday. Uh, anytime you're working with a radical, in order to simplify or get rid of a, a radical, you multiply by its conjugate. So the conjugate just is simply, instead of subtracting, you add between terms. Okay, so do you remember that we're going to multiply conjugates, but we're not going to touch the non-conjugate piece? So that means we're going to foil the top, but not the bottom. Okay. Do you also remember that when you foil conjugates, the middle two terms cancel? So you just have to multiply the first and the last. So what is the square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus h? Uh, since they're both the same, the square roots cancel. It's just, yeah, x plus h. There you go. Okay, and then what is... Uh, a negative square root of x times a positive square root of x. Negative x. Negative x, good. Okay, on the bottom, we're just going to leave this as it was above. Okay. So, good. Yeah, right. We uh, cancel out x's and we're left with an h. Would you go further and say I have an h on the top and h on the bottom? Yeah. Okay, so now what I have left here is the limit as h approaches 0. If I canceled everything on top, what's left over? 1. 1, good. Uh, because the x's, I have a x and then a minus x, right? So those cancel. And then I have an h over an h. OK, so now we're going to take the limit, and we're going to plug in the uh, 0 into the h value. OK, so we're going to have 1 over x plus 0 plus the square root of x. So um, what is the square root of x plus 0? The square root of x. And if I have a square root of x plus a square root of x, that makes two square roots of x. OK. So I'm not going to waste my time and try to simplify this right now. Technically, I shouldn't leave a radical in the denominator. But I know that's not my final step. Remember that we are initially trying to find the slope at the point 4, 2. So now what am I going to do? Good. Plug in the 4. And remember that you only plug the x value in. So 2 times the square root of 4 on the bottom. Okay, so on the bottom I have 2 times 2. Would you guys agree that the slope is 1 fourth? Good. Pretty easy? semi lag easy? What's that? Oh, do you want to? We could practice it. Yeah, do you want to? Okay. So the tangent line, 
Uh, so the point was given to us is 4, 2. We have a slope of 1, 4. So what would my equation be? Mm -hmm. 2. And then equals 1, 4. Oh. Minus 4. Good. Mm -hmm. And you would leave it there. Don't try to simplify it. You don't have to. That is a linear equation. You're done. I mean, you can if you really want to, but it's not necessary. So what's the final answer? Is it one portion the other one? Uh, according to the equation, so it depends on what the question initially is. So if my question was, uh, use the defini definition of the derivative to find the slope, then it would just be one-fourth. But on your worksheet, you're going to have a question that says, find the equation of the tangent line. So we were just explaining that so we didn't have to do a whole separate example to, right. to do that. Okay, um, I'm going to show you a trick. Okay, so back in the day there was a guy who said, hey, isn't there an easier way to do this? And of course the answer is yes, because it's math. There's always a better way to do things. Um, so I'm going to show you the basic rule. Uh, the notation for a derivative. Okay, do you guys see this right here, dy dx? Okay, that is a notation meaning I'm deriving y in terms of x. So y is like the equation that I'm working with, and x is the variable that is involved. Okay, that will become important, important later on when we start working with rates and real world scenarios. Does anybody know what this second notation means with a 2? Uh, it's a second derivative, okay? So it would be the derivative of the derivative. So it's possible for you to take a fifth derivative of a function, okay? So each derivative potentially can tell you different things, okay? This right here, notation, is exactly the same notation as that. They mean the exact same thing. They're de derivatives, okay? So that little apostrophe is a first derivative of whatever function you're working with. I probably will use that y apostrophe 90% of the time. Okay, so that just means derivative. Uh, two apostrophes is a second derivative. Three would be a third derivative. Okay. Okay, so here is the basic rule. Um, let's say we have a function. Uh, and let's say we have uh, c times some x to the nth power. Okay, now the basic rule only works if your function is written in standard form. To the nth. Okay. So let me say function must be in, in standard form. Yep. Why did you circle the d squared y over d squared x? Oh, I was just explaining what that meant. So I was pointing it out as I was explaining it. Oh, the so d squared, squared is a second out. derivative. Well, it's up to you. Those two mean a second derivative. Oh. And then the dy dx and the y apostrophe are a first derivative. Um, do I need to explain what standard form is before I continue? Okay, standard form, biggest exponent to the, all the way down to the constant, right? Okay, you can't have any dividing going on. Nothing fancy. All right, so if I was going to derive it, see my notation for derivative? I use the apostrophe. We're working in terms of x. Okay, so all that happens when you derive is you're going to take whatever your exponent is and multiply it by the coefficient in front. Okay, so my coefficient in my example is a c, so I would take c times n, and then for my new exponent, I just simply subtract 1 from it. So my new exponent would be n minus 1. Uh, the whole thing? Exponent part? Uh, the new exponent, you just simply subtract 1. Ready? 
Oh, I don't have an example. Bummer. Okay. Um, okay. Three. Okay, I'm gonna have to make up a function. Let's see. Uh, somebody give me a standard form equation. Huh? What more? Uh, okay, you guys are useless. Negative 3x squared plus, what did you say, 5x plus 8. <laughs> okay. What's that? The definition? This is an easy one. This is about... This is easy. This is easy, my... Trust me. Trust me. I know it's hard for you to trust me, but I promise. We okay? Okay. So, uh... To derive this, you ready? All I'm going to do is derive each term individually. Okay, so everybody looking at, Chaz, you with me? Are you looking at negative 3x squared? Okay, so I'm going to take the exponent, I'm going to multiply by the coefficient in the front. So, what's negative 3 times 2? Negative 6, you ready, Mike? You with me? Yep. Okay, then on my exponent, what's my new exponent going to be if I start with a 2 and I subtract 1? 1. Okay, now do I need to say x to the first power? You, it wouldn't be totally incorrect, but it would be silly. All right, ready for the second term. If I drive 5x, by the way, what's the invisible exponent above that one. x? It's a 1. So I'm going to take the 1, I'm going to multiply by 5, which makes 5. 5. Now, what's my new x exponent going to be? Zero. zero. So if I have x to the zero, how many x's is that? No x's. Kind of like I'm losing an x. Okay. Now on my third term, I'm taking the derivative of a constant. What's the derivative of 8? Okay. Yeah. The derivative of any constant is zero. Now think about this for a second. Remember that the derivative is analyzing the slope of, of the equation. If you were going to draw the equation 8, what would it look like? It would be like this. It would be a flat line, right? Horizontal. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. 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 Well, just zero, no, not zero. Zero would be one, right? Wait, zero. No, Why are you saying zero? Right. Never mind. It's not undefined. Okay. Close. All right. Uh, there you go. So that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now do a hard one. Okay. Let's see if I can think of a hard one. Uh, y equals three fifth roots of x squared. What? <laughs> I just derived each term. Each term, I multiply the exponent by the coefficient in front and then subtract one from the exponent. What did you say? I can't hear you. I was saying you weren't going to let me ask what I was going to say. If you just give us this one thing, I wouldn't do this for What? I told you to turn Oh, you mean this, uh, this particular problem? Oh. Okay. So now sometimes they're going to give you an equation that requires a little bit of rewriting before you derive it. Okay. Now this particular equation is written in radical form, but we can't derive from radical form. We need to have it in exponential form. Okay. So my first step is going to be to rewrite this in exponential form. Okay. Does anybody remember what a fifth root of x squared is going to give me an exponent at? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, standard form like 
Yeah, so, yeah, standard form in exponential, with the exponents instead of radicals. Okay, so the two, the exponent goes on the top, whatever the root is goes on the bottom. Okay, what's my second term going to be? Okay, a square root is the same as to the one half. True. That's okay though. <laughs> Minor detail. All right, let's do a dy dx. What's dy dx? What does that mean? That just is take the derivative. Okay, ready? Okay, so I'm going to start by taking the exponent, which is two fifths, and I'm going to multiply it by the coefficient in the front. What is two fifths times three? Okay, so you're just multiplying the numbers on the top together. Three times two makes six. We got six fifths. Mike, you with me? It's hard for me to help you when you're not paying attention when I'm teaching it. Okay, when I, our next step is I'm going to subtract one from my exponent. So I have two fifths. I need to subtract one. So what is two fifths minus one? Negative three fifths. So do you remember that one is the same as five fifths, right? So it's like two fifths minus five fifths, two minus five, negative three fifths. Okay, second term. I'm going to take my exponent and multiply by the coefficient in front. So it is four times one half. Two. And if I subtract one from my exponent, what is one half minus one? Negative one half. Should we do one more just for funsies? Yes. Oh no, let's just keep deriving it. We're going to find the second derivative of this. How are there two? You can take a derivative forever. You can keep driving and driving and driving. Uh, don't worry about it yet, but I will. You will eventually know what it means. Yeah, eventually you will. Well, no, not necessarily. It depends on the function. This one will never stop. But if you have one like the very first one where it was like quadratic and then... But with this, we keep subtracting one, it's going to keep getting like a smaller fraction, a smaller fraction, a smaller fraction. Sorry, you can't have this job. All right, Alexa, I'm ready. What does, I don't understand. Why are we changing this equation? What, can you just re-explain the, what the derivative is? Go back to the very beginning of why we're ta like the, taking I the derivative? Like, the purpose? Like, what? Yeah, the purpose of it. Uh, um, um, nice does anybody want to answer that question? Oh, so that's when I was talking about the zero and zero? No, oh, that thingy. Put her there. It's like when you do this. And the slope, like the I instantaneous. Mean, yeah, we're finding a slope. I thought it was a completely different thing. <laughs> okay, so deriving the first term, are we ready? So we're going to take the exponent and multiply by the coefficient in the front. So we're going to take negative 3 fifths and multiply by 6 fifths. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms together. Negative 18 20 fifths. You just multiply the tops together, multiply the bottoms. That's not hard. Easy. All right, here comes the fun part. All we're going to do is subtract is still subtracting 1. So what is negative 3 fifths minus 1? Negative 8 fifths, because you're subtracting 5 fifths. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8 fifths. You guys can do this, you calc students. <coughs> oh. Okay, second term. I'm going to multiply the exponent by the coefficients. What is negative 1 half times 2? Negative 1. You see how it turned into a negative? So now it's minus. Okay, one. I'm not going to write the one in front. Everybody okay with that? We already did that. Okay, new exponent. What is negative one half minus one? Negative three halves. Negative three halves. 
Okay, so let's say this is the one we're looking at, and we need to write this correctly. You cannot leave this as your answer. You can never leave a negative exponent. What happens with a negative exponent? What do we need to do to simplify it? Just move it into the bottom. Okay, so for the first one, I'm going to have negative 18. You know, see that 25 in the bottom? It's just going to go downstairs with a 25. Wait, I have a question. Mm -hmm. With the first derivative, why didn't we do that? Uh, because we just derived again. Uh, but so we could go like, back and simplify it so if we wanted like to. The final product. Exactly, the final answer. Okay. Um, on the second term, since I don't have a number in front of the x, remember it's an invisible 1, so I'm going to put the 1 upstairs and the x goes downstairs. Notice that when you uh, put it downstairs, the coefficient, the exponent, turns positive. We got it? That's as hard as you will see. There's not, I don't think there's too many that hard.